Cool. All right. Welcome to the uh, Morris Builder call. Um, I don't know what number this is. I feel like maybe it's the fifth or sixth one now. Um, well, uh, I know it's a short week for if you people that are in the U.S. and uh, maybe a busy week too, travel wise. And I know some people have some hangovers after uh, Dev Connect still, and there's just been a lot going on in the space. So that's great. Uh, so quick agenda tonight, or just like pretty low key. Um, just a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, first one is wanted to get a little bit of feedback on, uh, we would like to, and I, I haven't gone around the protocol. Um, oh, uh, I don't know who B sharp is, but, um, and can we stay on mute unless talking please? Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, so code freeze, um, it was something that we typically like to do, uh, in, in other places that I've been, even in web three, it makes sense. Um, you know, holidays coming up end of the year. Um, and in addition to that, uh, as you all, as you know, like team has been also working on the next generation of pocket network, um, building out the, uh, roll up, uh, on Celestia, uh, and we're anticipating, uh, a test net launch in early Q1 there. Um, so, uh, so we have a couple of reasons for wanting to institute some kind of a code freeze, if we can come to a agreement on that. First of all, it would be just to get us through um, holidays and, and not have anybody to have to like, uh, you know, push some code and break something and then needing to get core devs, um, you know, working on, working on a fix or something like that, um, you know, at this time of year uh, as we kind of like move into holiday time. Um, but then the other is really maybe more strategic about, um, you know, the protocol has continued to support like new things being built on Morse, but I think we have to show up in 2024 with everyone's eyes towards the roll up and start thinking about how we're going to move additional features that maybe some of you have built out, um, over to, uh, over to Shannon. Um, and we have, we're going to put some, you know, plans in place related to, uh, the migration, um, being able to do a bunch of, um, testing. I, I, my gut right now is that testnet will be up for a while, um, because we'll want to do a good bit of testing on it and we'll, there'll be quite a bit of migration to, to do. And that's going to be a combination of moving over features. And even when we Genesis the chain, it'll be, you know, we've got to put some stuff in place. Like we need to migrate state. Um, we need to migrate the wrap pocket bridge. There's like a, there's a lot of elements that we're going to need to work on. Um, and we're going to need all of your help. Definitely a lot of community involvement to really like stress test, um, the, the Shannon test net. So, um, so this is more about, um, yeah, wanting to do both like code freeze end of the year. Um, but then also thinking about, does that also mean sort of, you know, improvement proposal freeze or all new uh, improvement proposals when we, you know, get back in after the freeze, like, uh, need to be Shannon based and not more space anymore. So, um, we're likely to put a pip out to, uh, suggest all this and, you know, put it in front of you all, uh, down the community, uh, to get some feedback on it. But I just wanted to bring it up here in case anyone had any hot takes, um, or, you know, just dissenting, dissenting opinions on that or, Whatever, just trying to get a temperature check before as we're starting to put that together. Dates for freeze would be some, something like uh, the 18th of December through the 5th of January. I think that that's like the uh, Monday before holidays, and then you know give everybody uh, give everybody some time to get back after their um, breaks and whatnot. So um, we're going to propose that. Uh, within the next day or two. Just, you can hit the, uh, 
if if you, you can just hit the thumbs up or thumbs down or yeah sounds great snowflakes whatever button if you if you agree <laughs> cool all right i see some mateo do, are there any right. currently ongoing uh like pops or or sockets or anything that are you know that would need more time have we already like assessed if there's anything that is outstanding yeah good great question thanks for uh teeing that up zach um yeah, so uh, as you, uh, as people that have been around are probably aware, um, the Coder team, uh, and they're here on the call, uh, had two PIPs approved uh, maybe about three weeks ago now on the vote, and they are actively working on those and have indicated somewhere like early December they will be ready. Uh, I think the date um, that you guys shot over to me was around some shooting for the 10th, right? So that would, that's perfect. That's like before the freeze window. Um, and then uh, related to that would be bundling up a new uh, Morse uh, candidate. And now there will be a bit of a process change there, right? Because up until now, I believe that the way that that was happening uh, is that, um, those would be voted on uh, directly by the community. Um, but now what, we, what we've been doing, because all the improvement proposals um, are just kind of getting stacked up and they are being voted on, is like we probably don't need to then re-vote on the candidate. The candidate should include all of the approved uh, PIPs that have been going on. Uh, and so Coder, uh, who, are our, um, who are helping us out with Morse mainnet, um, are going to be responsible oh. for bundling a release candidate. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you guys want to? You guys want to talk about it? Cool. Awesome. I mean, there is not much to talk about, right? Uh, we have three pips that we are uh, leading the development on. Uh, our codes are ready. Uh, Olshansky uh, from Grow uh, is reviewing them this week. Uh, hopefully, he's going to be done uh, by the end of this week. And then next week, we'll yep. be ready to move them with the main branch. Uh, after that, uh, we are really uh, looking for starting the testing going on. Uh, there's new testnet being built, right? Uh, so they can upgrade their validators and services uh, to this uh, new uh, latest main branch. And we can get uh, some time. I know there are a few more updates uh, that wants to catch this train, which will likely going to be the last train ever for V0. Uh, that so, is correct. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully they will make it on time <laughs> because we don't want to delay uh, this release forever either. So maybe we can communicate cutoff dates more clearly with whoever else wants to uh, contribute anything uh, into this branch. Uh, and over the holidays, the testnet, only the testnet is going to be running and you know baking this a little bit. And once we are in the new year and done with the holidays, uh, we are hoping uh, in the First week or maybe second week of January, uh, we can declare this as RC. Uh, and now uh, we yeah. can slowly start upgrading the validators in the mainnet. Right, exactly. So just to okay. recap so there. Recap. Uh, and so Coder made reference to the new testnet maintainer team. Um, one of them is on the call. Uh, Breezy is here, um, but there are four Teams, as you may recall, we did a pop uh, a couple of weeks ago that we put out to decentralize uh, the Morse testnet. Uh, so that has been awarded to four teams, actually. Um, it's Breezy, it's Miss Kitty, um, it's Ian and Shane from NodePilot. Uh, so those four teams will be sharing the burden of running testnet. They will be responsible for receiving the up dated um as coder put it the the last train <laughs> to more for for morse um it, it will be rolling through uh they will be responsible for updating testnet um and then they will run that through the code freeze window uh and then when we come out of that then we can talk about um coordinating around an upgrade to for morse mainnet and yes that will likely be the last one and at that point uh forward we will like i said we will shift we will um 
we'll definitely want the community and all of us to sort of start shifting gears and ramping up around what's coming, which is going to be the the uh, Celestia based like roll up, um, and then that's where all like future development effort will be pushed essentially. Um, yep. So the only piece missing there is is that sorry. So I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, please finish, then uh, I have a question regarding the testnet. Okay, yeah, I was just going to, that's what I was going to talk about. The The team is, um, the, the new testnet team are in process of uh, spinning their nodes up. Uh, and we're organizing a stake-on-stake uh, -stake process to be able to get them all on uh, testnet. Um, it's likely looking like Monday, just due to the week that we're in. Um but we're, we're talking to Olshansky and organizing uh, ourselves in a group chat with the teams. Uh, so as soon as their nodes are ready and everything is sort of divvied up and we know exactly what's going to get deployed by whom uh, and where, um, then that process will all kick off early next week. Uh, so new testnet maintainers should be ready to take uh, this upgrade uh, the, week, the week after. Pretty much, which I think lines up perfectly with the time frame that you just laid out, Coder. Okay, awesome. Um, regarding the test nets, are there any performance metrics that is expected uh, from the maintainers? Like number of validators they will contribute? Is it just one, or do we uh, expect them to hit a certain number of validators, yeah, no. or is it released to you know keep up with the main branch uh, updates? Uh, those those kind of things. Yeah, so it's a combination of those things. Um, we're 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 consolidating on a number. Like right now, the team is there are three seed nodes and seven validators being run. Um, so we may mirror that. We may even add a couple of validators to it, just so that there's an even distribution amongst the the four teams. So the four teams are either going to run two nodes or three. Like we just haven't decided yet as a group. Um, so that's up for them to decide amongst themselves. Um, and then, so yes, so that, so testnet will be somewhere in the eight to 12 node range, depending on where we land and it'll be geo zone distributed as well. Okay. Uh, Toshi, uh, do you have any comments on the number of the, uh, validators that should be in the test nets at all? Yeah, I mean, if anyone has any feedback there, that would be great. That was going to be a conversation we were going to have as a group, and we're getting some feedback from Ramiro and um, uh, Olshansky on that. But if anyone else has any feedback, it would be good to hear it. Yeah, my insti instinct is the more, the better. Uh, so, I mean... Sure. Mark yeah. is probably right. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, sometimes you you don't know, right? Sometimes the uh, fewer is better because it catches this very awkward, uh, you know, race condition or something. But in general, we, right. we have thousand validators in in pockets, so probably the more is better uh, because it's more uh, reflective of what is happening in the real world. Yeah, I mean, the goal with our testnet is essentially integration testing. It's not really a place to do any kind of load testing at all, um, which is the problem with testnets pretty much across all protocols, but even more so with Pocket, because a lot of the heavy action happens off-chain anyway, and it's really just like... Uh, settlement that's happening down at the like uh, actual like you know blockchain node layer. So um, yeah, I think the heaviest new users of testnet as of late has probably been you some combination of you guys and and the node pilot team. So just getting a little feedback from from you guys like um, you know I mean we can start with a number and then if we need to like tweak. Also remember that. You know, again, like our goal is going to be very quickly to move from where we are with more spaced uh, test net to the uh, Celestia roll kit test net. Um, so that that transition will likely be happening in in Q1, um, and then we're going to want to push everything there, and then that's gonna that's gonna change it again because then. Um, we're gonna we're gonna try to run some things on their test net pretty um even even prior to that um teams working on that now um but we will be subject to the da layers like uh test net throughput 
essentially, and then we'll run our our stuff on top of it. Um, so yeah, so ramping up for that, and it, again, like um, the maintainer team here that all join us from Morse, uh, will also have the opportunity to then run uh, to help us with testnet for Shannon. Good feedback, guys. And on Shannon updates, um, we will also probably start to, um, uh, again, like uh, we'll, we'll do, we'll continue this call through the, uh, through up until the code freeze when we get back in 2024 though um the nature of this call will change a little bit because we'll again i think we're going to start to highlight some of the places um where we'll need some help on migration planning um integration testing with the new test net um and then probably a host of other things uh there will be you know um many new um pops and things that um we're planning because we want to you know lean into the community to help us out and um you know put out a lot more bounties next year or particularly around like development efforts and things um the goal of the project ultimately at a high level and i don't know if we've like said this in documents i know jack and i have been going back and forth on like we, how to best to communicate um all of this out but strategically um you know pnf wants to work with multiple development teams um and and not have you know quote unquote all eggs in a single basket so um this is uh the ethos of the project uh it's sort of core is like you know we 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 want to be able to be decentralized all the way down right so um that even means who is maintaining and we don't want to see like one team doing everything in any single domain so yes right now we still have a core dev team that's integrated in growth um but very quickly like we're as and we're we're doing our best now to set ourselves up for that like everything that's happening around morse right now code are involved um, and all the teams that we're onboarding now to help us with testnet. Um, ultimately, we're going to want to ramp you all up on um, on the new stack. Um, and so that is one of the things that we actually discussed at our offsite quite a bit was how we can help ramp the rest of the community up um, uh, to to sort of help with that transition. Right, our our the core dev team had to do it. They read a ton of materials. They jumped in slacks. They had some calls with the Celestia devs, with the role kit team, et cetera. Um, they ramped themselves up and now we want to be able to start sharing out that material with all of you. So then you guys can also ramp yourselves up, learn more about the platform, how it's built, et cetera. Um, and so that's what we're planning, um, a, a, you know, sort of a combination of content, um, other educational modules and things that will facilitate uh, in Q1 as we're, as we're all getting ready for testnet to arrive and then looking for opportunities um, where we can, you know, carve out um, things that we need done there that'll be like great first um you know, great first features or, or issues to work on to kind of help get familiar with the new code base, etc. Um, and yeah, and that'll be the that will definitely be a bulk of the effort in in Q1. Um, so we're cognizant that we want to uh, help with the transition and get you all like ramped up on the on the new platform. Cool. Um, all right. Let's see. I think that is um, all I sort of have um, on my agenda for today. Um, we 
everything that was on the last one got we we ended up not actually having the the last meeting so um yeah like i and i don't uh, i know there's a community call you guys will probably talk more about like goings on at dev connect and our offsite and things so um yeah that, that was basically the bulk of it from um from that perspective is is that you know we're we're definitely conscious of wanting to like you know hearts and minds <laughs> uh start ramping everyone up for for shannon um timeline is like i said looking like um q1 for testnet um there's been uh, some pretty good progress being made by the team of course it's all in github you guys can follow along it's the pock roll um repo um and yeah and that would put us on track for like a q2 mainnet and what we're trying to do is kind of anchor that to a fairly significant um, event. Uh, so we haven't picked that event yet, but we will uh, in in January. And then that will be where, like, you know, announcement, do some kind of big, like, event around it. Because it'll be, like, it's been a long time coming. I know you guys have been around the, pro the protocol longer than I have. But, um, yeah, it'll be something to celebrate for sure. <laughs> All right, so this is the portion where I go, does anybody have anything that they want to bring up and nobody says anything until I get to like, okay, we're going to sign off and then someone always has a question and then we go for another 20 minutes. No comments, but just want to state that we are thankful for the community, uh, for the product, and we wish everyone uh, happy holidays. Yeah, thanks, guys. Cool. If there are no comments, really, I'm, I'll, I'll be shocked. But uh, okay, maybe good. It's uh, everyone's already thinking about the end of the week. <laughs> Um, so yeah, same from us. We, uh, we, we really like, we really appreciate all the work that you guys are doing and how you're leaning into the protocol. I hope, uh, the, I hope everyone saw Ben's post, Zach, maybe you could mention that really quickly in case, uh, anyone missed it yesterday's like era update. I thought it was like, it was really good. Um, I hope you guys agree that, that. ENF is making some like excellent progress, pushing on the right levers. Um, we're, we're, we're seeing it. And, uh, you know, I don't like to talk about token prices, but it's nice that um, there's been, it looks like some, some positive responses there as well. Um, I don't know, Zach, if you're, if you're on and, and you can, you can talk, but maybe you just want to mention that and um, that he dropped that and where, where, where they can go read. It's on the forum somewhere, I believe. Yeah, you can grab that link for, for everybody real quick here. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, not much more to say than what you said. It's um, it's a little bit of an accountability of the era and the work that we've done over the last basically two months, but also the two months before that in prep. Um, and, and to echo what you said on token price, you know, it's almost always a lagging indicator. So it's really nice to um, to see the shift and then to be in a place where something like wrap pocket that was pushed out made a big difference on how people can get involved. And, um, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm very thankful for those of you that have been building on this because obviously having the tech work is the most important thing. Um, and that's, that's definitely showing improvements across not just internal like ecosystem, but out outside as well. So if you're not in the Poctopus den or the trading channel and you're interested, definitely feel free to tune in over there. I can, uh, drop those links as well. Let me grab those. And then, Coder, I think you're unmuted, so if you want to say something, feel free. Mm, no comments. No comment. Cool. All right. Yeah, thanks, Zach, for dropping the links. Yeah. Um, They're in chat now. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's a good read. Uh, if you want to check it out. Mm. And I, I also, I guess I will jump in to say, you know, one of the things that we're doing is we're, we're trying to relay some of the foundation that has eroded over the last year. Like, 
the switch from PNI to PNF, and then all of the the disentangling that happens with that. So, um, you know, there's a couple of people in this call that have been vocal, but continue to be vocal if it seems like we're prioritizing the wrong things or there are big gaps. Um, there's a good chance that we've talked about it, and then at some point, been like there are other you know higher priority things that we just need to address more urgently, but. The more the community is asking for certain changes, the more likely we are to put time, effort, and resources behind doing that. And you all are really smart, so we really appreciate when you do offer that feedback. Oh, and one important thing to note is, due to the token price change, um, the community contributions for Cycle 3 have gone from about 25k worth of pocket to 75k worth of pocket. So. It's a substantial amount of money we can put back into the ecosystem, which that is the most exciting thing for me is we can get more done with, with less here. So, Thanks, Mateo. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Zach. Cool. Uh, okay, so if nobody else has any other topics or discussions, then uh, I think we could... We can wrap it a little early, um, and we will definitely have uh, our next meeting in early, I guess it would be the first week of December, I think, uh, on the schedule we're on. Um, two weeks from today. And Two weeks from today. And we will, in the meantime, um, between now and then, we will be uh, dropping this pip that I referenced that will include things related to um, the code freeze window and... Uh, basically getting ready for um, the final Morse upgrade, which I think is something else to maybe celebrate as well. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, everybody, enjoy your Thanksgiving if you're taking the holiday. Um, and uh, we will catch you all in a couple of weeks. You know where to find us. And, yeah. Everybody stay safe out there.